Is Mitch Haniger the number one target for the Twins for a right-handed outfielder? J.D. Martinez, also a free agent. Both of them, their fits with the Twins, whether it makes sense this offseason on today's episode of Lockdown Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Wednesday, November 30th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every single day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Again, this is Nash Walker, three seasons hosting a daily podcast on the Minnesota Twins, four seasons writing about the Twins at twinsdaily.com. Mitch Haniger, right-handed corner outfielder. Makes a lot of sense for the Twins this offseason. I know I say it for a lot of these guys, but we're at the top of the market. Good players make sense for the Twins. They don't have any clear holes, which means they can add in a lot of different places. They have a lot of different routes they can go this offseason. So Mitch Haniger, could it be him? Could it be Jamie J.D. Martinez? Both of them today, their fits and what I think the Twins should do if they were looking at either of these guys in the outfield. The Twins' strength, not only at the major league level, but in the farm system, and that's a product of, of you know, the major league level strength is a product of the farm system having it as a strength, but it's left-handed corner bats. And when Luis Arise emerged as a first baseman in 2022, that was further pushed that the strength of this team is probably corner left-handed bats. But then Trevor Larnick got hurt again. Alex Kirilov got hurt again. Max Kepler's power absolutely tanked. This has been a three-year power tanking, but it really fell off in 2022. And all of a sudden, maybe left-handed bat corner bats are, are not a strength anymore. But on the current roster, that's what they have. They have Kirilov, Kepler. You know, Walner needs a spot. Eventually, Edward Julian's going to need a spot probably at second base. You have Luis Arise at first. They have a lot of left-handed bats. And those bats in the outfield, Flank Byron Buxton, who's a question mark and your best right-handed bat, but you don't know how many game, how many games you're going to get from him. Jose Miranda should be another solid right-handed bat, but the Twins desperately need, beyond Kyle Garlick, who I think is a fine role player, they need an everyday corner big right-handed bat. You could add Carlos Correa and fill two birds, you know, hit two birds with one stone. You could add Wilson Contreras and hit two birds with one stone, or you could add each of those guys, plus a Mitch Haniger or a J.D. Martinez or a right-handed bat who can play the outfield. With Mitch Haniger, I don't know out of any outfielder on the market beyond Aaron Judge if there's a guy you would look for more than Mitch Haniger on the open market. His fit, you know, lefty crusher, played for the Mariners. For those who don't know, Mitch Haniger, right fielder for the Mariners, has had some injury problems. He only played 57 games in 2022, played 157 games in 2021 in his career. So who is he as a hitter? In his career, Mitch Haniger is a career 261 hitter, broke in with the Diamondbacks in 2016 and then has spent five years in Seattle. 261 on base percentage at 335 and his slugging percentage at 476. That's an OPS of 811, OPS plus of 123 for Mitch Haniger. Strikeout walks, pretty, pretty standard. You know, strikeout rate in his career, 24%, walk rate, 9%. So he'll draw some walks. He's going to strike out a little bit. Absolute fastball crusher. Mitch Haniger destroys fastballs. He's not terrible against breaking it off speed. But he really, he hits fastballs really well and did so, especially in 2021. In a breakout 2018 season, his expected Woba on fastballs was 419. So he's a fastball, grip and rip, right-handed crusher. Pull percentage, something we like to look at as well. In his career, 42% pull percentage, that's well above league average. He's, as I said, grip and rip, right-handed power and like with Wilson Contreras, and Haniger is much more grip and rip than Wilson Contreras, target field plays for guys like Mitch Haniger. It absolutely does in left field, much more than it does for a left-handed hitter with that same profile. So Mitch Haniger, offensively, yes. Right-handed, above average, well above average hitter, corner outfielder, 
doesn't strike out a ton, hits the ball hard, crushes fastballs, grip and rip, plays at target field. Boom, 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 boom. You're checking all those boxes. What's he like defensively? Is he a butcher? Mixed bag defensively. You look at outs above average in 2021. He was in the fifth percentile. It's terrible. But you look back at 2019, another full season, he was in the 84th percentile in outs above average. Let's call it, let's call it average, or let's call it even 2017, 41st percentile. I think he's a below league average defender in right field. He's below league average. He's not going to be Max Kepler out there at target field. He won't be Max Kepler if the twins sign him defensively. But what you're getting that is a Max Kepler is a, a pretty potent right-handed bat. Injury question marks for him. The game's played. He played 157 in 2021, didn't play in the COVID season, 2019, 63 games. And then I mentioned in 2022, just 57 games. And he hit okay, wasn't wasn't a special year by any means, hit 246, OPS plus at 114. But Mitch Haniger since 2017 has played five seasons and he's been above league average by at least 14, no, by at least 8% in every single season. So he's, he's solidly above league average. In 2018, finished 11th for the MVP. I think for this team right now, it's absolutely a bat they could use in the outfield. Mitch Haniger. What's he going to get? How concerned should we be about these injuries? And then J.D. Martinez, who to me is intriguing as well. All of that coming up after this word from Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security, but you've been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Simply Safe is the best home security system keeps your family safe, whatever you're looking for, Simply Safe, they have you covered in terms of home security. Oh, Simply Safe offers protection against all threats in an emergency. 24-7 professional monitoring agents use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe protects you. Simply Safe protects your home, protects your family above all. And it's a great tool for you to go out and get to protect your home today. Simply safe, simply the best. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system we recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash lockdown MLB today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Mitch Haniger, injuries, had a back problem. In September, ankle problem in 2022. Also had COVID in 2022 and 2021, knee problem. So it's it's really across the board injury-wise. In 2020, back, missed the season, testicle problem in 2019. 2018, a knee problem and also a left wrist issue in 2018. So it's it's up and down. It's all over the board for him in terms of injuries. Uh, Mitch Haniger. He's not durable. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't been durable in the last handful of years. Although, like, how much can you take? Because in 2019, yeah, he only played 63 games, then missed 2020, but then he came back and logged 691 plate appearances in 2021. So it's you're wondering it, it would be a gamble for him, but what would the gamble look like? John Becker's median two years, 24 million for Mitch Haniger. I think that's super reasonable. He's 32 years old. Forgot to mention, he's going to be 32 in December here shortly from Mountain View, California. Mitch, he's first round pick by the Brewers actually in 2012. Two years, 24 million. Max Kepler's making eight and a half million. And I know this has been said many, many times, but I do think it's it's fairly straightforward swapping Kepler for Haniger. Trade Kepler somewhere, sign Mitch Haniger. And if it's two for 24 for Mitch Haniger, you're adding $4 million to the books, and whoever you're getting back for Kepler, maybe a prospect, B or C-level prospect, you're adding $4 million bucks to the set, to the uh, payroll, but you're getting that right-handed bat in return, and then Kepler is swapped out, and it's just a much better roster fit for the Twins right now to have Mitch Haniger. The question, I think, as well, and I, I did say this off the top or close to it, if the Twins were to sign a Contreras or a Correa, should they also bring in a Haniger? Like, is the right-handed bat problem still a problem if you get Correa or if you get Contreras. I would argue yes, because everything we've seen from the Twins in the last handful of years, oddly, after 2019, they haven't hit lefties very well. And if as much right-handed pop as you can bring in, I would. And then you're just, the the strategy there would be, we're going to put more faith into Alex Kirloff, Trevor Larnick. Hope, you know, Luis Arise stays healthy and he's the guy he, he was last year and has been. 
we're putting more faith into left-handed bats, Edward Julian. And then we got more right-handed bats coming in Royce Lewis and Brooks Lee and, and others as well down there. So it's, I think you add as much right-handed pop as you can, and that's in addition to Correa. And I think Mitch Haniger, Mitch Haniger is seamless here as well. <laughs> as a lot of these free agents we've talked about, I think Mitch Haniger uh, would be a really, really nice fit and a really nice addition. The Twins have been linked to him so far this offseason for what's the, for what that's worth, but it's it really is. I mean, he's he's grip and rip as I said last two full seasons, fifty home runs in two hundred and fourteen games. Big time bat, big time power, hit 39 homers in 2021, drove in 100 runs, could be a, a run producer for this team in the middle of their lineup, you know, bat fifth or sixth in the lineup and and really add uh, add another dimension to the to the heart of the order for the Twins. How about JD Martinez? Could JD Martinez do the same for the Twins? Older than Hanniger, JD just turned 35 in August. The Red Sox, they just they had a rough year. I mean, everybody, it felt like rough years. Xander Bogarts had a nice season. Devers was himself. You know, JD didn't have like a bad year, but as a team, it felt like guys just underachieved. And like as a unit, they had so many injuries and so many things pile up against them. And JD Martinez was not exempt from that. It was his lowest OPS plus in a full season because he had a, a really rough COVID season. His lowest OPS plus in a full season in his entire career, it looks like, dating back to 2012. So 2012, he played 113 games, had an 86 OPS plus, then redid his entire swing, swing kings with Jared Diamond. Jared Diamond wrote swing kings, goes in depth about how J.D. Martinez changed everything and was just a monster in Detroit. We saw that firsthand. He's been a monster ever since, but that was his lowest OPS plus in a season since 2012 with Houston. I was 12 years old. So that tells you how good he's been. He was 117. Like that's still that's still really a nice OPS plus. For a DH slash sometimes plays the outfield, not as much. Still 17% above league average. But JD Martinez, let's go back to 2018 with Boston. When he started his career, you know, his tenure there. Since then, he's a 292 hitter, on base at 363, 526 slugging percentage, OPS at 889. OPS plus 135, excellent, excellent hitter. J.D. Martinez is an excellent hitter. He's not going to strike out a ton. He's aggressive, but he's smart. He's such a smart hitter. Strikeout rate in that time frame with Boston is is reasonable at 23%. Walk rate at 10%. You know, walk rate in the last two years at 8.7% in each of those two years. The power was down, which was which is potentially a sign of his age. J.D. Martinez is now 35, and I think there's going to be some hesitation on the open market because I don't know how many teams view him as an outfielder anymore. I don't think many. So there, there's probably going to be a hesitation for him because how much excess – we talk about that excess value. How much excess value is he providing as a designated hitter, right? If the power he slugged uh, looked like since 2012 a low at 448, and it was – a low at 448, you know, dating back to his Houston days. How much power are you getting out of the DH spot if you sign JD Martinez? The batted ball data is still there. It's still there. The expected Woba, 84th percentile. The batted ball data is still there. Hard hit rate down at 60%, down from 90% in 2021. He just clobbered the ball in 2021, but he's only a year removed from that. Expected slugging percentage, 87th percentile. Barrel rate, 87th percentile. He can still hit. Chase rate's high. As I said, he's aggressive. Whiff rate was high as well in 2022, but about the same as 2021 when he had a really nice season and hit uh, you know, 28 home runs in 2021. He's not the same guy he was when he first started with Boston. When they won the World Series in 2018, he was awesome again in 2019. His first two seasons with the Red Sox hit 317 with an OPS at 985. He's not going to be that guy, but I think if you sign J.D. Martinez, you can hope that he is the 2021 version or a mixture of the last two seasons. JD Martinez compared to Mitch Haniger, who makes more sense considering the contract projections as well. It's coming up after this word from betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, and news analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. 
Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online is where the game starts. Again, betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis for whatever season you're looking for. It's easy to use on the mobile. It's easy to use on the desktop. Whatever you want to do, however you want to go play, do it at betonline.net. Betonline.net is where the game starts. J.D. Martinez, Becker Media, in one year, $13.75 million. We'll round up to $14 million. One-year deal at $14 million for J.D. Martinez in free agency. That's the projection on the uh, the slugger. I, I think the last two years combined are a, a solid floor for where he's probably going to be in 2023 if he's healthy, which he hit 280 in the last two years combined, OBP at 345, slugged 484, OPS 829, OPS plus 123. So 23% better than league average. It gets complicated with Martinez because the Twins like to DH everybody. You know, Buxton's going to DH. Arise will DH. Kirilov will DH. Everybody's going to DH. They like to get guys off their feet. I wonder if the Twins realized like last year they thought that that would make them healthier and they had like their worst season of health ever last year it didn't it didn't do anything i don't know if they'll completely give up on the idea of that but jd martinez did not play in the field 139 games at dh for the red sox in 2022 did not play in the field it's it's pretty much over for him in the field you can't i I, maybe you can try to stick him in left like he he's done it semi recently i think he got a handful of starts out there in 2021, it helps it help, 28 starts or 28 games in left field in 2021. He even played seven games in right field. But again, mostly DH. You're signing him as a designated hitter. If you can swallow that, you're going to like the bat. You're going to like the bat a lot. I just don't know if the Twins are in a spot with JD where they need like a, an everyday DH. It was so clear with Nelson Cruz in free agency in 2018 going into 2019. They just needed a, an everyday DH. DH an everyday bat they could just slide into the middle of their lineup they have a lot of DHs on the roster it feels like you could make the case that Arise and and Kirilov and Larnick and all these guys at this point are borderline DHs a because they have trouble staying healthy and b because they don't have a set defensive position does it help to add another DH to that mix who can't play in the field maybe maybe you're just trying to add as much offense as possible and I'm maybe a hypocrite for saying Add as much right-handed power as you can because J.D. Martinez is an absolute left-handed destroyer in his career. I'm excited about what this is going to say here in his career. Twins originally drafted J.D. Martinez in 2006. Fun fact. In his career, J.D. Martinez, over 1,500 plate appearances against left-handed pitching. Batting average, 306. OPS, 957. He slugged 579 against lefties. In his entire career. That's an entire career sample. 1,525 plate appearances. Pretty good against righties too. 843 OPS. But just otherworldly against lefties. Like Nelson Cruz-esque against left-handed pitching. That's attractive to me. I just love. I I always love thinking about just adding another big bat to a lineup. And I, I get carried away by it. And sometimes I don't think enough about the defense. And the implications of that. From a roster construction point of view. Think about adding J.D. Martinez to this lineup. is really, really fun to think about. Mitch Hanniger makes more sense for this team. He, he's a better fit defensively. He can play right. You know, maybe even could have a quality season in right. He's done it before. Twins need a right-handed bat. They can play in the outfield. You know, if Buxton gets hurt. They need some insurance for that. Hanniger, Hanniger pl- can't play center field, but he's just a right-handed bat you can rely on, hopefully, to stay healthy in 2023. He, the, the roster part of it, is Hanniger. It, it it absolutely leans Hanniger. The bat part of it is it's fun to think about JD Martinez in this lineup. Was he propped up by Fenway? Probably, but before Fenway, he was just fine. He was he was terrific for Detroit. I like the idea of adding him. I like the idea of adding Mitch Hanniger too. I mean, either of these guys, big right-handed power bats, Hanniger, more utility in the field. JD Martinez probably can project a better offensive season, but maybe not by much, which is why I think we have heard the Twins are interested in Mitch Hanniger. At least there's some some general interest in Mitch Hanniger. J.D. Martinez at Target Field would be just fine too. I mean, I think he would he would hit well there. He has hit well there in his in his past. One year, 14 million versus two years, 24 million. I'm probably leaning Hanniger. I'm probably leaning Hanniger. He's younger. He can play in the field. 
and it's it's less average annual value. It, it, it's only two million less, but it's less. And I think JD Martinez is probably going to get more than one year for fourteen million. I bet he gets one for fifteen or sixteen. It's nothing at that point. But Mitch Haniger for twelve million for twenty twenty three, and if you find a way to trade Max Kepler, the the roster utility is uh, it's seamless there for him. I think it makes a ton of sense to bring him in, whether you know, regardless of whether you sign Correa or Bogarts or Contreras or, or whatever you do. Mitch Haniger, it's 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 absolutely there, absolutely there. The fit, and I think uh, I think over JD Martinez in this free agent period. Thank you so much for making Locked On Twins your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today available on this app, YouTube. And wherever you get your podcasts on, the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Should the Twins take a flyer on a Cody Bellinger, Joey Gallo, Michael Brantley, left-handed bats coming up for the rest of the week in the outfield? I know it's a strength for the Twins, but we've seen them get very creative in the past where they deal from strengths and then they bring or perceived strengths and then they bring in different players and different fits to make up the roster. Thanks again for listening. Have a great day. Join me then. Go Twins.